Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you how to find the stable state matrix. What do we mean by the stable state matrix? Well, here's our example again, where we have three stores, A, B, and C. Store A has 40% of the customers, store B has 50% of the customers, and store C has 10% of the customers. So that is the initial state, and this is what we call our initial state matrix. It's called X sub naught initial state matrix. Then we can see that not all stores stay in the same, not all customers stay in the same stores. Uh, some do, like for example, 60% of the customers in store A stay in store A, 70% of the customers of the in store B stay in store B, and 50% of the customers in store C stay in store C. But the other customers, they move to a different store every week to try out to see what the sales are and so forth. And as you can see, all the red numbers here represent the percentage of the customers going from one store to the other. That is captured in what we call the transition matrix right here. So we have from store A, B, and C to store A, B, and C. Notice, for example, from store A to store B, that would be this right here. From store A to store B right here, that's 30%. And we can see that's indeed 30% going from A to B. Now, if this plays out over time, and we can go from week after week after week, we can see that the customer distribution will change. Notice after the first change, let's say this happens every week, we can see that from this state, we go to a new state where now only 30% of the customers go to store A, 49% of the customers go to store B, and 14% of the customers go to store C. That's, that, that's the first state after one week. Then we can continue doing that to find the second state. We multiply the first state matrix times the transition matrix to get the second state, and we keep doing that until eventually we get the final stable state. Then we have the final distribution. How do we find that final distribution? Well, let's say we don't know what it is, but we're going to call it the stable state matrix. And let's say that the elements are going to be A, B, and C, representing the percentage of the customers going to each of the three stores, A, B, and C. Well, once we reach the stable state matrix, then we can go ahead and multiply the stable state matrix times the transition matrix. And of course, the matrix should then no longer change. That's what we mean by the stable state matrix. That will happen after a certain number of times. We don't know how many times, but that doesn't matter. We can simply say that if we take this stable matrix and we multiply it times the transition matrix, we should get back the stable matrix. So since we don't know what it is, let's just call it A, B, and C and see what we get. So we're going to call the matrix uh, A, B, B, C. Well, let me leave a little bit more space because those are elements in the matrix. So here's the stable state matrix multiplied times the distribution matrix, 0 0.6, 0, not the distribution matrix, but the transition matrix. That's a better name for it, to 0 0.3. 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. And then that multiplication should give us the stable state matrix A, B, and C, because it should no longer change after we reach that stable matrix. All right, that's stable state. Now, let's go ahead and multiply this out, and set equal to that, and then we'll end up with three equations, three unknowns, which we have to solve for A, B, and C. So let's see what we get. So multiply this row times this column, we'll get A times 0.6, B times 0.2, C times 0.3 will give us A. So that gives us 0.6A plus 0.2B plus 0.3C is equal to A. We do this now for this row times this column to get B. So 0.3a plus 0.7b plus 0.2c is equal to b. And finally, we multiply this row times this column to get c. So we get 0.1a plus 0.1b plus 0.5c is equal to c. Now we have to solve those three equations to find a, b, and c. So let's start with the first equation. And to make things easier, let's multiply everything by 10, which means that we get 6a plus 2b plus 3c is equal to 10a. Then what we're going to do is we're going to solve for one of the two variables, or one of the three variables, and the best one to solve for would be the one with the smallest coefficient. So let's solve for b in terms of a and c. So we move everything else to the other side. So we get 2b is equal to 10 minus 6, which is 4a is equal, oh, the equal sign is already there, and then minus 3c, then dividing both sides by 2, we get b is equal to 2a 
minus 1.5 C. So let's go ahead and circle that. So now we have B in terms of A and C. Now we're going to take that and plug that into our second equation. It doesn't really matter which ones we plug it into. And so then we're going to eliminate B in terms of A and C. So now we take our second equation, multiply everything by 10. So we get 3A plus 7B plus 2C is equal to B. We're going to combine the Bs. So we're going to move the bits B over here. So we get 3A minus 7B. Oh, be careful here. I have to multiply both sides by 10. That means I get 10B on the right side, not just single B. So I multiply the left side and the right side by 10. Move the 10B over here. I get minus 3B plus 2C is equal to 0. And now we're going to plug in for B what B is equal to in terms of A and C. So we're going to plug that in here like that. And so now we get 3A minus 3 times B, which is 2A minus 1.5C plus 2C is equal to 0. Now let's combine like terms and see what we get. So we get 3A minus 6A, which is minus 3A. We get minus 3A minus 1.5C, that would be plus 4.5C plus 2C is equal to 0. Combining that, let's see, I got this correct, that would be, yes, that's correct. So now combining that, we get minus 3A plus 6.5C, like so that equals 0. Then moving the 6.5C across, we get minus 3A is equal to minus 6.5C. And finally, if I divide both sides by 3A or by 3, I get A is equal to 6.5 over 3C. And then to get rid of the fraction, or not fraction, but the decimal, let's multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So we get A is equal to 13 over 6C. All right, so now we have our first relationship between A and C. Now we can do the same for B. What we're going to do now is plug in 13 over 6C instead of A and see what we get over here. So now this equation becomes B is equal to 2 times. Instead of A, we're going to write 13 over 6C minus 1.5C. Okay, so this is B is equal to 26 over 6C minus. Now let's go ahead and multiply both the top and the bottom by 6. So we get minus 9 over 6C. And finally, we can say that B is equal to 26 minus 9, which would be 17 over 6C. So now they have two of the three variables, A and B, in terms of the third variable, C. Now we can go back to the principle that we know that the, the elements inside a state variable always have to add up to 1. In other words, 50% plus 40% plus 10% add up to 100%. So therefore, A plus B plus C has to add up to 100% or 1. That means that if we add those three together, and let's do that over here, we can say that A plus B plus C is equal to 1. And we know that A is 13 over 6C and B is 17 over 6C. We can then write that A is 13 over 6C plus B, which is 17 over over 6c plus c is equal to 1. And of course, 1 over 1c is like 6 over 6c, so why not I go ahead and write that? So I can write this as plus 6 over 6c equals to 1. In other words, 13 plus 17 is 30, plus 6 is 36. So I can then write that 36 over 6c is equal to 1, or 6c equals 1, or c is equal to 1 over 6. So now we have the value for one of our variables. c is 1 sixth. Well, if c is 1 sixth, I can plug that into these two equations and see what we get for a and b. So a is equal to 13 over 6 times 1 over 6. So we can see that a is equal to 13 over 36. And now we can go to B and we can say, well, that means that B is equal to 17 over 6 times 6 over 6, oh, times 1 over 6, no, so 1 over 6. So this gives us 17 over 6, uh, 36. 
And finally, I have c is 1 over 6, and I can also write that as 6 over 36. So therefore, c is equal to 6 over 36. So now you can see we have c, we have b, and we have a. Now, of course, again, those should add up to 1. So notice that if I add 30, 13 plus 17 plus 6, they do add up to 36. So that would be 36 over 36, or 1. I now have my 3 elements in my final stable state matrix. That means that A, B, and C, so it can now say X is equal to, so for A we get 13 over 36, for B we get 17 over 36, and for C we get 6 over 36, and of course we rather write that in a decimal, so let me get my calculator, and that means that 13 divided by 36 is equal to 0 0.361. So the stable matrix is equal to 0 0.361. The second element is 17 divided by 36, which is 0 0.472. And the third one would be 1 divided by 6 equals 0 0.167. Let me go ahead, since the board is so filled here with all the stuff, let me go ahead and box that in red, there's my final answer. I was looking for the stable state matrix. After many iterations of multiplying the initial state matrix times the transition matrix, we finally get the final state of the situation, which means that the A store will have 36.1% of all the customers. So this will become 36.1% of all the customers will go to st store A, here we can see that 47.2% of the customers will go to store B, so store B will end up with 47.2% of all the customers. And finally, store C will end up with 16.7% of all the customers. Again, a quick check will then show you when you add those three together, they should add up to one. And so yes, when you add that together, you do indeed get one. So we know that we did the problem correctly. And that's how we do that. Quick review. You have the initial matrix, you have the transition matrix. When you multiply the initial matrix times the transition matrix, you get the first state. You do it again, you get the second state, you get the third state, and you can keep doing that until you get the final stable state. A better way to do it is to go ahead and multiply the stable state, which you don't know what that is yet, call it A, B, and C, multiply times the transition matrix, and you get the stable state back. Then you solve for the three elements, A, B, and C. When you do that through some algebra, you then get the final state of A, B, and C, which represent the final customer base going to A, B, and C. Now, of course, in this example, it's customers, but it could be any example for any business situation you might end up with. And again, this Markov chain method like that simply tells you what's going to happen in the future based upon the current state and how the transitions between the states happen. And that's how we do that.